think your job is killing you? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we will explore the comic book origin of the Suicide Squad. This is not what I signed up for. Oh, but it is. Welcome to the Suicide Squad. As with most comic book characters, there are often reimaginings and different versions to a character's past. We've chosen to primarily follow the storyline which unfolded in 1959's Brave and the Bold No. 25, which was expanded upon in 1987's Legends No. 3, 1987's Secret Origins No. 14, 2001's Suicide Squad No. 1, and 2011's Suicide Squad No. 0. The Suicide Squad, which debuted in 1959, was the nickname of a secret government project called Task Force X, comprised of people who would tackle problems with no thought as to whether they would emerge alive. Each of the four members of the squad had chosen to do this because they had survived experiences where their comrades had died heroically. Colonel Rick Flagg, the leader of the squad, had seen the other members of his Air Force squadron perish in an aerial encounter. Likewise, military nurse Karen Grace watched a wounded soldier drown, as physicist Jess Bright and astronomer Hugh Evans managed to escape a catastrophic nuclear bomb test. Together, the Suicide Squad used their skills to defeat strange menaces, such as a prehistoric monster, which they destroyed by sending into orbit around the sun. By 1963, a variation of the squad, called the Suicide Squadron, had their own adventures in star-spangled war stories. This squadron was unrelated to the original squad, but was made up of military men who shared a similar courage in the face of bizarre and deadly menaces. When the squad was revived in 1987 as part of the Legends miniseries, its origin was changed significantly. Retroactive continuity established a connection between the original squad and the war-themed Suicide Squadron, but the newly formed team was a different beast altogether. This new Suicide Squad was put together by Amanda Waller, a tough, no-nonsense government official, and was once again led by a man named Rick Flagg, who was the son of the colonel who had led the original unit. So what do I call you? The name's Flagg. Colonel Flagg. Colonel Flagg. You're kidding, right? This time, the crew was largely drawn from the ranks of supervillains, criminals who volunteered in order to shave off time from their sentences. To make sure they cooperated, they were fitted with explosive bracelets, and anyone attempting to flee would be killed immediately. How did you enjoy your last meal? Not bad. The asparagus was a little overcooked, but the lobster was perfect. It was laced with explosive nanites. Excuse me. That's right. Any escape attempt and, well, you're gonna look kinda funny trying to run away with no head. The new squad's first lineup consisted of Flag, the Flash's foe Captain Boomerang, a magical being named the Enchantress, a scientist whose experiment made him massively strong but mentally unstable named Blockbuster, the expert marksman Deadshot, and the martial arts master Bronze Tiger. In their first adventure, the team of misfits defeated a monstrous villain called Brimstone, but in the process, Blockbuster was killed. This marked the other key difference between this version of the squad and the previous iterations. Members could and did get killed during their missions, making it a true suicide squad. As a result, membership in the squad changed fairly frequently. Suicide Squad, remember? I'm expendable, John. Even got the damn bomb in my head to prove it. In 2001, the squad received another makeover. The basic setup was the same. Villains working as part of a secret government project. But for this incarnation, Rick Flagg was dispensed with, and his place was taken by Sergeant Rock, the hero of many DC comic World War II stories. Joining Rock was his old squad mate, Bulldozer, even though both of these men had supposedly died years ago. In 2011, yet another iteration of the Suicide Squad burst onto the scene, once again under the control of Amanda Waller. Her motivation for putting this squad together had to do with putting a heroic colleague out of his misery when a mission went wrong. Her new squad was to be made up of people that she viewed as entirely expendable and deserving of any rotten fate that befell them. Over its long history, the Suicide Squad has made several television appearances as well. These included appearing on the shows Justice League Unlimited, Smallville, and Arrow. I need to talk to Waller. With a concept that allows for an unlimited cast of colorful characters, there's no telling where they'll turn up next. Are you a fan of the Suicide Squad? For more comic book origins, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. You'll have my full report by 0800. Right, that'll be all. Rick, you're a good soldier. 
Your father would be proud. Ma'am. Thank you.